Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! The Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn, has told the BBC that if a Brexit deal secured by the Prime Minister is rejected by Parliament, Theresa May would have to go back to Europe and renegotiate. His warning came after Labour's shadow Brexit secretary, Sir Keir Starmer, indicated that the party is likely to vote against any Brexit deal, making it much harder for the Prime Minister to win a majority in Parliament. And he said nobody should rule out a public vote that included an option to remain in the EU. Our political editor, Laura Koonsberg, sent this report from the Labour Party conference in Liverpool. I believe the European Union to be a capitalist club that is for the few, not the many. How to keep the whole crowd together. Nobody is ruling out Remain as an option. What's wildly popular with some. Despite what Keir may have said earlier, it's a public vote on the terms of our departure. Appalling to others. Labour's now promising there could be another referendum. And what's more, the leader would vote down Theresa May's Brexit. Jeremy Corbyn, do you know what no one else in the country does know yet, what the final shape of the Brexit deal will be? No, I don't. All I know is that this government has had 27 months to negotiate a Brexit deal. If you don't know yet, then, the shape of the final deal, how can you decide now that you are almost certainly going to vote against it? I've never said that. I've said we would test whatever they come back with. Your Shadow Brexit Secretary has said today if Theresa May brings back a deal that fails our test, that looks increasingly likely, Labour will vote against it, no ifs, no buts. He said if the six tests are not met, we'll vote against the deal. We've made that very clear for some months now. It's a bit more than that, though, isn't it? I mean, Keir Starmer is sending a very strong message to the country that Labour is planning to vote down the Brexit deal. We have made it very clear all along. Aren't you pushing us towards leaving without a deal? Not at all. This proposal that the government will make will have to come back to Parliament in, I suppose, the next month or so. The government will then have to go back to the EU and say, look, our Parliament can't agree to this. These are the parameters that Parliament wants us to negotiate on and go back and do that. You can't guarantee that would happen. If Labour votes down the deal with other people opposing it too, the chances of us leaving without arrangements, which some in your party have described as a catastrophe, you've said that would be the worst deal of all, that becomes more likely. That's the, the arithmetic. The greater likelihood is that the government would then collapse itself and we'd have an election in which uh, I hope the people of this country would make it a choice of a different government that was serious about a relationship with US, Europe and serious about protecting trade. If you held another referendum, you'd be sticking two fingers up to 17.4 million people who voted to leave, who wanted politicians like you we to listen to their concerns. We haven't said there's going to be anything yet. It, what we've said is all options must be considered if and when this government collapses or its negotiations collapse. We just, the options are still there. And if there were another referendum, would you vote leave or remain? Well, we don't know what the question is going to be in the referendum, and so that is a hypothetical question. But we're, this is all hypothetical, as you yeah, say it's yourself. Completely hypothetical. As you say yourself, what the party's been talking about this we week is we, what to do. If, we don't if know there what were the question will be, so I can't answer that but question. But if there were a referendum... I can't answer that question because we don't know what the question is going to be. Free Palestine! While the volume of support for Palestine was huge this afternoon, there are still concerns the leadership hasn't done enough to close down prejudice towards Jews. Do you wish, though, given how long this has all gone on, do you wish you'd handled any of it differently? I've done everything I can within this party to make sure we have a process. I've done everything in my ca I can in my life to oppose racism in any form. There are crowd pleasers here too. Labour would subsidise 30 hours of childcare for two-year-olds in England, as well as three- and four-year-olds, as happens already. Those on average or below average income would have a longer period, if they wish, free. Others would be expected to pay, but it would be capped at £4 an hour. So that could be a, a big expansion of the service. It would be a very there. big expansion of the service, and it would cost about £4.5 billion, which we, would, uh, we think is an investment in our children. Jeremy Corbyn's fans are here in vast number. But party conference is not an easy week for any leader, let alone Labour, and let alone now. And the Labour Party has been talking much more loudly, much more explicitly about the possibility of another referendum on the European Union.
and they've also been much more explicit, much more hard line about the very likely outcome that they would try to force Theresa May's deal down. This is, though, as you heard Jeremy Corbyn, the Labour leader there, sound rather irritated about having to talk about hypothetical questions. But we are in a hugely uncertain period in politics when lots is uncertain. Almost everything is hypothetical. And the biggest question in Westminster in the next few weeks, Sophie, will be what if? Laura Koonsberg in Liverpool, thank you. From the Labour Party conference in Liverpool, where one subject overshadowed all others today. Yes, you guessed it, Brexit. Tonight, though, we do finally have a clearer idea of where the party stands. It has firmly put the option of a second referendum on the table. Would it offer us the chance to change our minds and stay in the EU? Well, the shadow Brexit secretary, Sir Keir Starmer, said this morning, yes, it very well might, to loud applause and a standing ovation, though not from all. A number of his front bench colleagues here sat resolutely on their hands. But the delegates backed him with a vote. So too did Jeremy Corbyn, as we'll hear later in the programme. It has, in a slightly roundabout way, been a day of decision here with potentially huge impact. He was the star of the show at a fringe party at Labour's conference tonight. But Jeremy Corbyn wasn't the only man in the spotlight today. His shadow Brexit secretary appeared to set the party on a new course on how or even whether we'd leave the EU. It's right the Parliament has the first say, but if we need to break the impasse, our options must include campaigning for a public vote and nobody is ruling out Remain as an option. That brought them to their feet, a call to arms that seemed to resonate with the rank and file. Although their enthusiasm wasn't shared by some on Labour's front bench, who clearly felt he'd gone off message. One union leader wasn't buying it either. I believe the idea of having another option for people to go back into Europe, I just think that that would be wrong and confusing and perhaps divide our nation even more than we are at the moment. So was it just his own view, not policy? Mr Starmer, can I ask you why you think Remain should be on the ballot paper? I um, was reflecting on what the motion we passed on uh, Friday, um, Sunday. Some in the shadow cabinet were openly backing him. What we're saying is all options are open, including that of a people's vote and that of Remain being on that ballot paper. But one Labour veteran was alarmed at the prospect. Not sure that actually holding up you know, the great dream of another referendum, when everything is going to be, you know, the omelet is going to be unmade, I just, I'm, I'm sceptical about it. He went too far, in your view. And I think he, he went in line with what the NEC had said earlier on in the week. Don't forget, the party's policy is very much not, we're not ruling things in, we're not ruling things out, which is not a bad negotiating position. This pro-Brexit campaigner said another referendum would be a betrayal. If it's on the ballot paper, either to vote for Mrs May's deal or for no deal or remain, isn't that fair? That's not fair, that's three votes. You're voting for three separate things. That's splitting the leave vote. But in the conference hall, virtually unanimous support for leaving open the possibility of giving people another say. A vote that could dramatically All raise the stakes over Brexit, with Labour effectively saying they'll vote down any deal Mrs May brings back and if she won't call a general election, they could then demand a second referendum. Certainly Labour has travelled a long way at this conference, but will Liverpool really be seen as the moment the Brexit tide turned? There are many here who genuinely hope so. Libby Vina, News at 10, Liverpool. When Sir Keir Starmer told delegates, as we saw in Libby's report there, that Remain could still be an option in the event of a second referendum, he had departed from his published script. So was he striking out on his own? No, not according to Jeremy Corbyn. The Labour leader told Robert Peston he knew what was coming. Mr Corbyn said if the party didn't like the deal Mrs May got from the EU, Labour would vote against it. And if Mrs May lost that vote, then delaying Britain's departure would be an option, he said, to allow more time for a better deal. A Labour leader on the eve of his big speech wanting to highlight his big plans for childcare and giving workers shares in their companies, but hijacked by, you guessed it, Brexit. Keir Starmer said the option of Remain was open. Massive standing ovation. Can I check? 
did he clear that statement with you? The speech was, of course, discussed in advance, and what we said was that we'd put this motion to conference, which was agreed by 200 delegates from differing perspectives. But just to be clear, the explicit line, which actually wasn't in the version that he put out, that Remain is an option, you knew he was going to say that? The speech was cleared, so yes, of course, I knew. But a referendum is only a possibility if MPs, including Labour ones, vote against any Brexit deal or no deal the Prime Minister puts to them. If she brings anything to Parliament that looks like her checkers plan, that fails your tests and Labour would vote against. Yes, it would, obviously it will be tested against our questions, our six questions. Your view is checkers fails those tests, doesn't it? Yes, it is my view, but they may come up with something else, but I doubt it. A chunk of your voters, not the majority, voted to leave. Don't you worry that some of them will think that you are standing in the way of Brexit? Nobody voted to lose their job, nobody voted to d damage the living standards of the majority of people in this country. They voted leave out of anger, anger at deindustrialization, anger at um, fly-by-night economics. If we were staring at a no-deal Brexit and the only way to prevent that would be to delay the date of leaving the EU, would you be in favour of that? 27 months gone and very little achieved. There are not very many more months to go. I, I see that. So, but so I think what you're saying is it is an option delaying the 29th of March because I don't, none, of what, none of the rest of what you've said makes sense unless you're prepared to accept that's a possibility. Look, all the options are going to be there. That's, for clear, that's absolutely clear. Saw you at the gym this morning. You're famously somebody who lives very healthily. But what else is coming here? But it's, <laughs> it is a fact that if you became Prime Minister next year, you would, I think, be the oldest individual to become Prime Minister for the first time. Does that mean that you have a view that you would only want to do a certain number of years as PM? I'm very happy. I'm very fit. I'm very proud to lead our party. And I'll carry on doing exactly that because I want to bring out about social transformation. Now, Corbyn's Labour is the most overtly socialist and therefore anxiety-inducing for the wealthy and business leaders of any in living memory. Now, your old friend Andrew Murray thinks that because you're challenging the establishment so much, he thinks the Secret Services are probably working to undermine you. I haven't noticed it if they are, um, so it's not something that keeps me awake at night. In fact, nothing keeps me awake at night. Not even, it seems, all those Brexit uncertainties and rows. Robert Peston, News at 10. Meanwhile, the Cabinet has been discussing what should happen to immigration after Brexit. They have agreed in principle that highly skilled workers from all over the world should be prioritised and EU nationals should not be given preferential treatment. But some business leaders fear that raising the bar and allowing in fewer low-skilled EU migrants could damage the economy. Our home editor Mark Easton reports from Corby. Corby's been described as England's fastest growing town. Thousands of EU migrant workers, particularly from Poland, have seen its population and its economy expand rapidly in recent years. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Now, it's fair to say that the prosperity of this town is reliant on often low-skilled workers from Europe, but the pace of change has also created real tensions here. With government ministers suggesting special treatment of EU workers will end with Brexit and a squeeze on low-skill migration, do the people of Corby think that's good or bad for the town? I think it'd be a good thing, actually, because I think we've got enough unskilled workers, you know, that um, we could do fair enough with people that's got skills, but I think we've got more than enough of our own. They bring more money in as well as us. I mean, we've got a load of people that work in care in our place at work that are Eastern Europeans and they do the amount of stuff what we do. It'd be detrimental to the town. Um, I've talked to a neighbour the other day who runs a job agency and he said he's looking for 600 staff for all various jobs, skilled and unskilled, can't get anyone. The corrugated sheds which typify Corby's economic expansion already struggle to find the people they need because of a slowdown in European migration. In this one, the boss says making it more difficult to recruit would pose real challenges. 50% of our workforce is migrant European workers. So that is, you know, if you take those away from us, then we're going to be struggling to find good people. Well, why don't you 
train up British workers. We will train up anybody who comes to work for us. We get very few people from the UK wanting to come and work in this environment. Corby's migration has been a focus of particular study for analysts at the IPPR think tank who reckon the government's proposed limit on low-skilled migrants would mean many potential workers from the EU would be unable to get a visa to work in the town. Our estimate would be that about 80% of the people living in Corby today from the European Union would not qualify to be working, to come to work in, in, in Corby in the future. Corby's steel industry was forged from the imported muscle and sweat of Scottish labour. When that declined, new growth came with arrivals from Eastern Europe. Now this resilient town, like many, may have to reinvent itself for a new chapter. Mark Easton, BBC News, Corby. Away from here, the Prime Minister has been sticking to her guns over her checkers plan. As she headed to the United Nations in New York, she told us that the so-called Canada Plus free trade deal favoured by some of her opponents on the Brexit wing of the party was basically an impossible concept because it could lead to the breakup of the United Kingdom. One of Theresa May's first events at the United Nations today was alongside the French and Canadian leaders. Many in her own party are urging her to scrap her Chequers Brexit plan and adopt a Canada-style free trade deal with the EU. She's firmly ruling that out, but is it now looking increasingly difficult that she can get any kind of deal through Parliament? Fifty of your own MPs are prepared to rebel. Labour would vote down your Chequers deal. You simply haven't got the parliamentary arithmetic now to get any deal through the Commons. What are you going to do? Well, when we bring a deal back from the European Union, members of You're Parliament, of that. members, members of, I'm confident that we can bring a, uh, come to a deal with the European Union. That's been echoed by others. The Irish Prime Minister, the Taoiseach, has uh, said that uh, he believes a deal can be done. If you don't get a deal through Parliament. Will you have to consider your own position? I'm working to get a deal from the European Union to bring that deal back. And when that deal comes back, I think members of Parliament will obviously look at that, but also consider that this is a point at which we will be delivering for the British people. Big cheer at Labour conference today when Keir Starmer talked about remaining being on the table in the event of a people's vote, a second referendum. But you are ruling out quite firmly any second referendum, aren't you? Yes, and because for one very good reason. We've had a people's vote. It was the referendum in 2016. People voted to leave the European Union. I believe it is now down to us as politicians to deliver on that vote. If people are going to trust their politicians, they expect us to do what they asked us to do, which is leaving the European Union. Labour seem to be saying, oh, well, maybe, maybe that was wrong. Maybe we'll ask you again. No. People voted. Let's deliver for the British public. As Theresa May continues her meetings with world leaders here at the UN, discussing how to solve the world's conflicts, it's the political battles at home that are very much unsolved. Angus Walker, News at 10, New York. And Robert, of course, joins me now. Now, look, this. We can probably agree this was a relatively big moment today. Now, surely Theresa May is now going to say to her Brexit MPs for the next few months, if you vote down my deal, you get another referendum which you might lose. Will that have any effect on them, do you think? Well, it would require quite a change of stance by her because up to now she's been saying, I control mm. whether there's a referendum or not, and she's been consistently saying she won't allow a referendum. Um, now, it has to be said that parliamentarians think that actually they can c take control of the agenda and force a referendum on her. So, yes, it's possible that she will now start to use that as the stick to, to beat her Brexiter MPs. But it's a slightly dangerous game for her mm. to play because many of those Brexiters say, and they, they probably said this to you, that actually they think being in the European <laughs> Union is not as bad mm. as the kind of deal she's proposing mm. where you have to take all their rules but you have no influence. So Boris Johnson, for example, has said to one or two people, bring a referendum on. He thinks he could win it a second time. Mm. So, you know, I, I, I agree with you that she will probably exploit mm. Labour's mm. Uh, change of tack, but it isn't necessarily going to work 
in turning her Brexiter sort of MPs into more loyal MPs. And as we saw very graphically today with the yeah. front bench literally sitting on their hands, it's not all peace and love here either, is it? No, both parties are deeply mm. split. I mean, one of the things that was most striking mm. uh, after... Keir Starmer made a very explicit statement mm. that, you know, he wants the option of remaining in the EU to be open. Uh, Len McCluskey, some would say the most powerful mm. figure yeah, yeah. in the party because yeah. he's the paymaster, mm. is very explicit that he will fight any referendum that is about anything than the terms of the deal versus no deal Brexit. Mm. He does not want the option of remaining in the EU to be given back to the British people. So, although Jeremy Corbyn said to me mm. that he backed Keir Starmer, as and when the moment comes for the terms of mm. a referendum to be set, and it may never come, mm. let's be clear, there will be a furious row within the Labour Party mm -hmm. about what that, le what that referendum should be about. It's not yet settled. Furious rows everywhere, uh, one suspects. Robert, um, thank you very much indeed. The line that stole the show was the line that wasn't even in the original script. Keir Starmer told the Labour Party conference that nobody was ruling out Remain as an option on any second Brexit ballot. He got rapturous applause from some in the hall, stony faces from others. And the leadership appears to have been walking a tight line ever since. The speech by the shadow Brexit secretary also confirmed it was increasingly likely Labour would vote down any deal on Brexit the government brought forward. This on the day that Labour delegates approved a motion that would keep all options, including a fresh referendum, on the table if MPs are deadlocked over Brexit. So are we ushering in a new vision of Labour's version of Brexit? Or is the party just exploring new ways to sit on the same fence? Here's our political editor, Nick Watt. From a small corner of the land comes change that may be felt across the country. The nature of Britain's departure from the EU, with implications for Europe as a whole, may have been shaped in Liverpool today. Labour signalled that it would vote down any Brexit deal negotiated by Theresa May potentially scuppering her plans after Tory rebels indicated they would join them. Reinforcing its pivotal role in the Brexit endgame, Labour also voted to allow a further referendum if Theresa May refuses to hold a general election, which she duly did tonight. Our preference, our preference is clear. We want a general election to sweep away this failed government. But if that's not possible, we must have other options. And conference, that must include campaigning for a public vote. In a mild challenge to the more cautious leadership, Sir Keir Starmer departed from the approved text to say the option of staying in the EU may conference. be on the ballot paper. It's right that Parliament has the first say. It's right that Parliament has the first say. But if we need to break the impasse, our options must include campaigning for a public vote and nobody is ruling out Remain as an option. All too much for one veteran Eurosceptic. But the apparent freelancing was lapped up by the conference. Sir Keir Starmer is often dismissed as something of an unworldly political figure after he made the jump from law to parliament. In fact, this most wily of operators has gently nudged the Labour leadership into accepting a mild form of Brexit, much to the irritation of some. And of course, we'll be pushing for a people's vote on the deal, on the deal, the terms of our departure. Not a second referendum on whether we remain part of the European Union or not. That referendum's been had. People have decided we're leaving the European Union. A former Europe minister goes further and rejects a referendum outright. I don't support a second referendum because I think it's not going to resolve any of the problems. I think it would just reopen many of the divisions that came out during the 2016 referendum. I think what we need is a deal, we need to move forward and we need to bring the country together and I think a second referendum would jeopardise that. And Caroline Flint believes it's unwise of Labour to talk of rejecting any deal negotiated by Theresa May. 
I think it's too early to suggest that we'd vote down any deal. Um, and the danger of voting against a deal, we end up of exiting the European Union without a deal at all. And that's exactly what the hardest Brexiteers want. I think in the interests of uh, fair play, you want to actually see what is the deal is coming forward. I actually do hope that uh, if there is a reasonable deal, Labour will allow people to vote on that. I'll reserve my judgment because I want to see what that deal is. But more importantly than anything else, I want a deal to stop us crashing out without one. Remain supporters are determined to secure a further referendum. You cannot undermine democracy with more democracy. Very, very simple. Um, and in the end, um, if the Governor of the Bank of England is right that a no deal would mean a drop in house prices of 35%. Um, that would mean a recession deeper than 2008. I don't see a chance in hell that politicians will not go back to the electorate in that scenario. For now, the shadow of Europe hangs over any political gathering in the UK. Back in Liverpool tomorrow, Jeremy Corbyn will seek to shift the focus onto his plans for a radical remodelling of the economy. Nick Watt, well, Labour's Shadow Home Secretary Diane Abbott told the conference she was rejecting what she called bogus numerical targets for immigrants and was ready to change the way the party talked about immigration. I spoke to her before we came on air and asked for her thoughts on Keir Starmer's speech today and whether she could now envisage another referendum with a Remain option on the ballot paper. It's difficult to envisage it because we, we're looking to see what happens with Theresa May's negotiations. But we have to keep the option on the table because the worst possible thing would be to crash out of the EU without a deal. And I think the whole party is united in thinking that would be a catastrophe for our, for our economy. Do you think that Jeremy Corbyn agrees with Keir Starmer on that line, that nobody should rule out Remain as an option? Because it wasn't clear from what he said this evening. No, I mean, we're actually much more united than the Tories on this. Um, uh, Keir made an excellent speech. He made it clear that what we'd be looking for was a general election, but we wanted to keep a second referendum on the table, and Jeremy supports him on that. You know, you're looking for sort of little divisions in the Labour Party. The big divisions are in the Conservative Party. But there was a change of tone, wasn't there, from Keir Starmer. He said, nobody's ruling out Remain as an option. So I'm trying to work out whether tonight, where you are, uh, in Liverpool, in the conference, there is a sense that there is a new vision of Labour's Brexit. You need to take our position at face value. We are, we are determined to honour the referendum. We w ideally would want a general election. And in the event of not having a general election, we have not taken the second referendum off the table. You need to take our position, actually, at face value. Fair enough. If there is um, a general election on the table, would you now campaign for that second referendum with that option in it? Is that the right thing for you to do, Labour, now? We need to see what sort of deal, or if she gets a deal at all. At this point, we're all looking to see how Theresa May's catastrophic negotiations so far, actually. But at this point, we're all looking to see how Theresa May's negotiations go. So when you use a word like catastrophic, and Keir Starmer was the same, he said no ifs, no buts, but if Theresa May brings back a deal that fails our test, and that looks increasingly likely, Labour will vote against it. He's right to say that, is he? Oh, yeah, that's, that's all of our position. And that means Labour voting, in essence, for a no deal, that you would then go through the lobby with the Rees Moggs, with the Boris Johnsons. You'd be happy to go through there on no deal. Let's see what sort of deal Theresa May comes up, comes up Increasingly with. Increasingly likely with Keir Starmer's we... words and catastrophic with yours. So I'm just quoting back the position that you're envisaging for yourselves. Her negotiations have been catastrophic. It's taken her a year and more 
to say something which the EU27 were asking from the beginning, that she would guarantee the rights of EU citizens. Those are catastrophic negotiations. And it, does, it doesn't you know, inspire confidence, I think, in the public. Right. So I'm just trying to get the, the process, if you like. She brings back what you think will be a, a catastrophic deal. You will vote no, which means no deal. Uh, and would that mean then, as Emily Thornbury suggested, a delay to the Article 50 date? Is that now inevitable? Let's see what she comes up with. Come on, with. Diane, you can show but some leg are, on this. No, we, we as a party are quite united. We have six criteria. If her deal doesn't meet the criteria, we will not be voting for her. But we don't know what her deal is yet. But you can see why people are getting frustrated with Labour, can't you? Because you've already decided that you're probably going to vote against the deal, which you think will be catastrophic. So you're going to vote no deal. But then we don't know if Article 50 will be pushed back. We don't know if there'll be a second referendum, which you'll campaign for. We don't know if Remain will be back on the table. It, you're not giving your, your voters or anyone who wants to support Labour anything to go on here. We've been very clear. What is catastrophic is actually crashing out with no deal. We don't know that's going to happen, but if it did happen, it would be catastrophic. When we see her deal, we will know whether it it meets our six criteria and if it doesn't we will certainly vote against it that's been our position all along let's talk about some of those criteria and immigration which was in your speech just now will there be a special status for people from the eu coming here to live and work what i am saying is we will have criteria we'll have a new system of workers visas and within the framework of the system we want to treat people equally that is only fair. Your speech this evening was about respect de immigrants, calling out, you said, predatory employers instead. So this is a big moment in a way because you know that many people who voted for Brexit, who voted for leave, um, were concerned about levels of immigration in this country. Are you prepared to go and tell them that they were wrong to blame immigrants, that it was actually unscrupulous bosses bringing down wages? It was not immigration. I think you have to be very serious about why people voted to leave. People voted to leave partly because I think they felt that they had been abandoned, they felt that people in London and the big cities weren't listening to them. You have to respect why they voted and you have to engage in a debate and you have to try and address some of the very real issues. That's a complex thing. Do you worry by saying that it's not about immigration, that you somehow confirm Labour as the middle-class, London-centric, uber-liberal, youth-obsessed party that's handing a P45 to your MPs in the North? You seem to be reading from a Tory script. I'm telling you that migration is a complex issue and we need to start with the facts. I'm telling you the reason that some parts of the country voted to leave is a complicated question and we have to listen to them and respect them. But if all you're doing is throwing Tory talking points at me, it's difficult for me to respond. That came from a Labour member who was in the hall who said that Labour should be worried that's exactly what they're doing. Clearly. If we weren't prepared to respect the result of the referendum, if we weren't listening to people in other parts of the country about migration and, and, and a whole range of issues which cause them to vote leave, that would be difficult. But we do want to respect the referendum and we do want to listen and respect the reasons why so many Labour supporters voted to leave. Diane Abbott there. Well, let's pick up with Nick Watt. Again, still in Liverpool, waiting the leader's speech um, tomorrow. Nick, we know that Labour would love a general election right now. Is that at all likely? Well, speaking on the way to the UN General Assembly in New York tonight, Theresa May has ruled out a general election for before Brexit. Now, at one level, that's no great surprise because there's one thing Conservative MPs are agreed on. Do not have a general election anytime soon. Although it is important to say that Theresa May 
very strongly ruled out a general election and then called one. Now, the significance of her remarks is that that announcement this evening removes the one condition that Jeremy Corbyn and John McDonnell had set in the way of a further referendum. They said, we want a general election, and if that doesn't happen, then yes, maybe we would support a further referendum. So uh, that one's been removed. We've all got uh, Brenda from Bristol on speed dial right now, haven't we? Um, what about Keir Starmer's words? Do you think they will change in any way what we will hear from the leader, Jeremy Corbyn, tomorrow? Well, I think it's no great secret there was frustration among supporters of Jeremy Corbyn with Keir Starmer. And Jeremy Corbyn very much wants to focus away from Brexit tomorrow. So in his speech to the Labour conference tomorrow, he is going to say that he would create 400,000 jobs in a green revolution. And this would come in investment uh, that would be needed to reduce net carbon emissions by 60% by 2030. And this is all going to be part of what he's describing as a radical restructuring of the economy. He's going to say it is now the 10th anniversary of the financial crash and he's going to talk about how that marked how the greed is, gr good, uh, the greed is good approach to financial capitalism came crashing to earth and he's going to say the political and financial elite 10 years ago, rather than breaking down that system, propped it up. Important to say though, aides are making clear they are not cri critical of Gordon Brown, Prime Minister at the time. They're saying he did the right thing in the circumstances. We'll see you then, Nick. Thanks very much indeed. I've been